Hi, what I'd like to do in this video is do a quick review of exam one and the information that you need for exam one. So I hope you find this to be helpful. If you've done the homework, there shouldn't be too many surprises as far as the material or the types of problems are concerned, but I thought I would go through this uh, so that you're even less surprised than you would have been before. All right, so um, right now what's happening is I'm trying to move the slide and it's not moving. So let's try this again. Interesting. Okay. There we go. All right. So the first thing I want to say um, is that, and I apologize, I'm uh, obviously trying to use big slides in a relatively small area. It says important at the top. Um, first of all, I use the automatic grade grader um, I, I put a key in there to help me grade, but it's not going to be your final grade. I still have to go them through them by hand. So the first thing that you get back will not be your entire grade. I have to go through and grade them. It's not so much an issue on this exam because I don't think you get uh, a full grade on this exam, but the next exam, this will be a big issue. So bear this in mind. I always have to go through them by hand until um, in, in order to get to your grade. Second, um, I'm going to be traveling between September 14th and 16th, so I won't be as um, as accessible as I normally am. If you have any issues, um, then um, you know, shoot me an email, and I'll try to get to you at least within 24 hours. And um, you know, if something major happens, I'll take care of it when I get back on the 17th, which I know is the last day of the exam. But I'll try to keep current on everything. Um, also know that you have 75 minutes to take the exam. If you go the complete 75 minutes, nothing's going to happen. It's not going to blow up. Think of it as um, being equivalent to being in a classroom, which is why I picked 75 minutes, because that's how long my uh, class traditionally is. Um, you know, the teacher might stand over you, glare at you a little bit, uh, but they'll let you finish up for a couple minutes. So if you go a couple minutes over, it's not a big deal. But obviously, if you go you know, five or more minutes over, that's going to be a problem. So um, realize that you do have 75 minutes and most people don't have trouble finishing in that amount of time. The exam itself has the following. Uh, 10 questions worth three points each like the problems in chapter 1.2. Uh, 10 questions worth three points each like the problems in chapter 1.4 part 3. All right. The chapters in chap uh, the problems in chapter 1.2, remember, are asking you if something is an argument or non-argument and if it's a non I'm I'm sorry if it's an argument, identify the conclusion. So all you have to do is write argument, non-argument, and for the argument, just state what the conclusion is. For the second 10, it's going to ask you if it's inductive or deductive. If it's inductive, is it strong or weak? If it's deductive, is it valid or invalid? There will also be two questions on the counterexample method, which is 1.5. And then finally, 15 multiple choice questions with two points each, and that will be on the material from chapter 2. So there are four parts to this exam. As far as the part for 1.2, don't forget the indicator words at the beginning of chapter 1.1. So if you're stuck on what the conclusion is, look at those indicator words and see if they help out. If um, you're not stuck and you have extra time, it might be good to check the indicator words just to double check your answer. And as far as determining if something is an argument or a non-argument, refer to the different types of non-arguments that are discussed in chapter 1.2. And also I have a PowerPoint on chapter 1.2 that's up there as well. For chapter 1.4, uh, um, in order to determine if something is inductive or deductive, go over the different types of inductive and deductive arguments that are presented in chapter 1.3. Those should help. So for example, if you see an argument based on mathematics, you know it's going to be deductive. If you see a hypothetical syllogism, you know it's going to be deductive. If you see a prediction, you know it's going to be inductive, etc., etc., etc. Those are, are easy ways of doing this particular problem. One thing that can happen sometimes, especially when people get nervous, is they forget that valid and invalid go with deductive arguments and strong and weak go with inductive arguments, okay? So it's, if it's deductive, remember valid or invalid. If it's inductive, remember that it's going to be strong or weak. For the counterexample method, uh, there's a handout on the counterexample method. And um, I, I posted it relatively recently. You might want to look that over. It breaks it down into relatively small steps. And also, make sure that you start by finding the conclu conclusion. Ironically, the biggest mistake that people make, because I know the counterexample method is really tough, is that they get so caught up in trying to find the counterexample that they forget to start with the easiest step, which is to find the conclusion. So again, 
make sure you start by finding the conclusion and using the indicator words from chapter 1.1. If you can't find the counterexample, make sure that you put down the conclusion and the form. You'll get partial credit for finding both of those. All right? So um, don't leave that one blank. Even if you write the conclusion down, you're going to get two out of five. If you find the form and the conclusion, you'll get four out of five. So uh, make sure that you um, do the best you can on those, even if you can't find the actual counterexample. For chapter two, all of them will be multiple choice. Part of that is because some of these different types of, of um, definitions overlap each other. The homework should cover everything that you need to know for chapter two. And focus especially on the, the following. Uh, definitional purposes. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I shouldn't be coughing into the microphone. And I should start, start taping this over again, but we're five and a half minutes into this. Um, definitional purposes. Um, look at the different um, uh, types of definitions, so lexical, um, precising, etc. And also look at the different uh, definitional techniques. Remember there's three um, extensional um, techniques and four intentional techniques that are discussed. You know, um, genus and difference, uh, subclass, things like that. Um, also, make sure you understand the concepts of intention and extension. Uh, intention refers to the qualities the term has. Extension um, goes with the membership that the class has. So increasing intention means getting more specific, adding more to the definition. Decreasing intention means taking away from the definition, becoming less specific. Extension, increasing extension is more members. Decreasing extension is less members. Remember, conventional connotation refers to the meaning that a word has um, uh, for a um, competent speaker of the language. And also remember the concept of empty extension. All right, empty extension just means that it has no membership. So interestingly enough, um, unicorns and vampires have the same extension because they both have em empty extension. So remember things like that. All right, if two things have the same extension, it means they have the exact same membership. Uh, finally, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to post these questions in the um, there we go. Be sure to post these questions in the discussion area and I'll be happy to answer them. The reason I ask you to do that is other people might benefit from your question and obviously of course it will help your discussion grade. So if you have questions on anything to do with the test, obviously not after the fact, okay, because some people may not have taken the text, then you email me. But if you have questions before the exam about how the exam is or what's going to be on it or any of the material for the exam, uh, please feel free to post in the discussion area. All right, good luck on this exam. I hope you do well, and um, I will catch up with you soon.